This program has been made possible in part by Interweave, the handmade life. Your craft community for books, magazines, videos, patterns, events, and more. On the web at interweavestore.com. Add some texture to your knit and crochet pieces on today's Knitting Daily. Hi, I'm your host, Dooney Jang. On today's Getting Started segment, I'll dive into scrunch stitches, a great way aside from cables to add surface design to your knitwear. I'll demonstrate a scrunch stitch welting stitch and how to knit into rows below your work. Next on today's How To segment, author and designer Connie Chang Kinkio joins Shay to talk about texture stitches and demonstrates her favorite cast on, the tubular edge. On this episode's Crochet Corner, Kristen begins a new series of fine crochet and introduces you to lightweight yarns and their many uses in crochet. Finally, I'll wrap up today's show with a quick tip for ruffles by demonstrating how to knit them stacked. Let's get started with this great scrunch stitch. There are a lot of wonderful designs this season that showcase this stitch and it has a lot of things going for it. If you take a look at the swatch in front of me, you can see that the stitch has this really cool kind of scrunchy texture, hence the name scrunch stitch. And even better, it's completely reversible. It looks exactly the same on both sides, right down to which side the scrunches are on. If you take a closer look at the structure of the stitch, I'm gonna spread it apart a little bit here. And you can see that we're working in just a standard, ordinary six by six rib. So that's six knit stitches, six knit stitches and six purl stitches, or six stitches of stockinette and six stitches of reverse stockinette. Um, but with a twist, we're not working in just straight columns. Instead, at intervals, we're working this scrunching, which is actually a welting stitch. It's a technique for knitting into a few stitches below, which you can see it in this reverse stockinette column, actually gathers the two rows together and creates the sort of bumpy, welted texture on the front. When we offset it from stockinette to reverse stockinette, um, when we offset it by a few rows, it overall builds into this wonderful, very textural, rich looking fabric. So let's take a look at how to do it. You work this stitch in two kinds of ways. So there's a very simple formula for determining how often to scrunch and when to scrunch. If you're working a six stitch welt, you're going to scrunch half of each, uh, of each ro uh, ribbing column. Um, and you're going to scrunch it at exactly the same number of rows as you have stitches. So you're gonna scrunch every six rows um, in this pattern. So in this pattern, we're going to scrunch on rows one and row, um, row one and row seven, which are six rows apart. So I'm ready to scrunch in my reverse stockinette stitch column first. So I'm gonna knit off those first six, six stitches. I'm gonna knit with my right hand so that you can see a little more clearly. I'm gonna pick up a slightly smaller needle than the size needle that I'm using for my fabric. I've got a size eight needle here, and I'm using a size five needle, but really any needle that's small enough to fit easily into stitches without, um, without actually distorting them or, or pulling them out of shape or slipping out of the stitches will be fine. And I actually need to go back because we're scrunching on our stock and net row. So we scrunch in the latter half of each column. I've got my, uh, I've got my smaller needle here. And what I'm going to do is we need to scrunch on the reverse side. We're gonna actually pick up the purl sides because we're bringing two wrong sides of the knitting together to create each welt. So since the knit side is facing me right now, I'm gonna turn it up and we lay it flat so that you can really see what's going on. So, I'm gonna, so I turned it up over my knitting so that I see the wrong side of my knitting. I am still positioned to work on the right side. I'm gonna take my needle and I'm gonna count down six purl bumps from where I am now. So that's one, that's two, that's three, that's four, five, six. And I'm doing that without, um, without changing which column I'm in. I just counted straight down to number six here. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick up the purl bumps, this one, this one, and this one, in a straight row going from the top to the bottom with the way that the work is oriented right now. So I've got three purl bumps on my needle. I'm gonna go ahead and 
fold my work so that those pearl bumps meet the back of the bumps that are currently on my needle. I'm going to reorient my work so that it faces me the right way. And now I'm going to work those two stitches together into one. So I'm going to insert my right needle as if to knit into the stitch on the front needle, insert it as if to knit into the stitch on the back needle, and then pull my yarn through both at the same time. So you can see that those two stitches from two different needles have been joined there. I'm going to do that again. Front needle, back needle, and pull through. And you can really see that I'm being careful not to twist my stitches and make sure that they're seated properly as I'm doing this. I'm going to purl the next six stitches as normal. And now I'm ready to do it again. Now I scrunch on just the latter half of each column, so I'm going to knit three stitches. And again, I'm going to turn my work over. Here's my first purl bump, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm going to insert my needle from the top to the bottom in a straight line. Fold my work up. And this is a little bit fiddly with all the different needles that you have going. So just go slowly and make sure that you're working without tangles or dropping stitches. I'm going to join those just the way I did before. Front needle, back needle, knit together. And now I'm going to purl to the end of my round, or my row. And that's one row of scrunch stitch. Now, when you get to row, uh, row seven of the scrunch stitch pattern, we've already scrunched on the side, on the, uh, on the stockinette stitch columns. Now we need to scrunch on the purl columns, and that's actually easier. I'm going to knit off my entire stockinette stitch column. And now, even now I'm ready to scrunch in my reverse stockinette stitch column. But even though on my uh, stockinette stitch columns I was scrunching in the latter half, on these I'm actually going to scrunch in the front half. And the reason is because when you view it from the other side, those scrunch stitches will appear on the left side of what is now a stockinette stitch column on the wrong side. And this is even easier. So I'm going to scrunch my first three stitches. And all I need to do is the purl side is already facing me, so I just need to count down. One, two, three, four, five, six. Again, insert from the top to the bottom in a straight line. Bring the needle forward. This time it's in front of your real needle. And now I'm going to purl a stitch from the back needle and from the front needle together. So I'm going to insert my needle as if to purl into the first stitch on the back needle. Then as if to purl into the front into the first stitch on the front needle and purl two together. And you would repeat this. You would repeat this all across your row. And you can see that you've created this cool little welt that appears just as an interruption on this side and as a true welt on this side. And I just want to show you really quickly that you can extrapolate this technique to any number of stitches that you want. You want to follow just the same basic formula. Here I've got 10 stitch columns, whales of ribbing, um, 10 knit stitches and 10 purl stitches. And what I'm doing here is I'm scrunching five stitches at a time and I'm scrunching them on every 10th row. And you can see that as the fabric grows larger, it gets this really amazing dimensional kind of kind of quality to it, which you can either flatten out a little bit with blocking or with some steam blocking, or you can leave it in its, in its, uh, in its just lovely lofty puffiness. So this would be exactly the same kind of thing. All you need to do is just watch how many stitches you're scrunching and how often.